Hello, welcome back to Frag Chat with me, Smelly, and... Smurfy. So, uh, of course, it's Claire, the lovely Claire, from the uh, Smurfy Girly Fragrance channel. And uh, here's me, Mr. Smelly, as well. So today, we're going to do a special edition uh, mainly devoted to Jeremy fragrance-related things because there's been a couple going on. Uh, so one of them, of course, is his upcoming new fragrance, and the other one is a little bit of a controversy, and we do like to try and, or we in the past have done a bit on gossip in the YouTube fragrance community. So uh, when there's a juicy bit of it, we like to stick our noses a right. A bit of Fragcom drama, we're up yeah. for uh, getting involved. We wanted to get involved. So, uh, yeah, two things to do with Jeremy Fragrance. A bit of a special edition today. We're just going to stick to that subject. And the first thing, of course, as, as I'm sure most people who watch Fragrance videos on YouTube will know, Jeremy has announced that he is going to be releasing, uh, his star, starting his own line of fragrances. Uh, but he hasn't really revealed much about what no. that means, what the fragrance will be, what it will be called, who will be making it. But this week, there was an interview on Fragrantica yeah. with the famous uh, writer on Fragrantica, Miguel Matos. Over to you, Claire, for more information about that. Okay, yep. So, um, Fragrantica exclusive, Jeremy discusses his own first fragrances. That's the title. And uh, Miguel asks Jeremy quite a lot of questions. He doesn't give a lot away though. He's not giving a lot away, no. No. But he does give us a few tidbits, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. Um, so he's going to make two fragrances to start with, but he's not revealing whether it's one male, one female. Miguel asked him that, didn't yeah. he? And Jeremy um... said, um, I've already told you too much. <laughs> oh, I, I, you know, I've told you enough already, you'll have to wait. So he wouldn't say whether it's one for men and one for women, but it will be two that he releases initially. Yeah. Uh, what else have we got? Um, there is so Miguel is saying, uh, yeah, the, the fragrance would be the best in the world, best perfumer, best because per, there can be a lot of different things. So, Jeremy was saying it has to be really great, it has to last long, and um, he said it's very consumer focused. I think he was saying it's very much about it, it needs to deliver what the consumer needs. It doesn't sound like it's so much about being really Same arty. That or basically, that kind of thing. there's not really going to be a backstory. It's all ah, about it, a yeah. fragrance that has that just gets you compliments and just smells really good and performs mm -hmm. really well. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I mean, I kind of like a backstory. Yeah. And I like to a story or an influence behind the fragrance gives me something for my imagination to enjoy as well as my nose. Yes. So I'm not sure if this is going to be a I don't know, maybe mass I think, market kind of appealing thing. Well, I think Jeremy's whole thing, of course, is very much, I think he once famously did say in a video that he mm. would wear something that smelt really bad if uh, girls really liked it. Uh, and I mean, that's probably a, uh, one of his more extreme statements, but his channel is a bit like that. It's all about, does it get compliments? I don't, I think he said in the interview something like, I don't want to hear about someone's, the smell of their grandmother's, grandmother's bar, bathroom yeah. or apartment when they were growing up as the backstory you know i just want it to smell good and get results okay so um, he did reveal the perfumer is a man but he's not yet willing to tell us who the perfumer is yes not in so many words but he said um yes why do you say you have the best perfumer in the world miguel asks and jeremy says because of his creations and miguel says ah it's a man it doesn't miss much so miguel. jeremy accidentally gives away that it's a yes. man perhaps and he so. says yes what, you want to read that bit out, yeah? Okay, so Jeremy describes the perfumer like this. He's the Michael, Jack Michael Jackson of the fragrance industry for me. He has a super established portfolio of successful releases. He is very charismatic. He is a massively cool person and he is the best guy for the project. Many fragrance houses wanted to do this and in the end the best of the best accepted to do it. So... Who do we think that perfumer is? Well, you we've said, speculated. We're yeah. speculating, so yeah. we've both got one that we think it is. And we want you to tell us in the comments below, who do you think the perfumer will be based on what little clues we have? Yeah. But here's our guess, our best guess. Right, so you said it could be Bertrand Duchafort, because if you think about it, Bertrand Duchafort works for many, many brands, small and big and anything in between. Yeah, we thought he's someone who might do it. He might he turns up that for smaller brands and bigger ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I suggested, a bit out there, I suggested Carlos Bernay. Ah, yes. Because he has an eclectic list of fragrances under his name. One of my favourites is... 
Dunhill icon. Yeah. He also did Polo Green way back in 1978. So it's, he's a real he's veteran. He's also done a few small niche houses as well. Yeah. So potentially, I mean, and he's also done some really weird childish fragrances for Zara. Right. So he's done everything from real high I'm street being, cheapies. I'm not being funny when I say that, or am I? But <laughs> no, there, there, I, there was I would like, just no, say no, that he's done he, fragrances literally for children, hasn't he? Yeah. Made for Zara, the, yeah. the clothes out of it. So he's very and, open and, and that's not. I so guess. yeah, it, 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 you know, it's not going to. We assume it's not going to be Olivier Polch, who presumably yeah. has signed up with Chanel, maybe. But there are some high-end perfumers who seem to also dabble in. Or you know that he might not mind working with a YouTube person, so we th that's not a bad. Yeah, because call, I, really. I think you you know not every heart, you know seriously professionally trained perfumer is going to be okay working with a vlogger. No, not some of them might think that's beneath them. Yeah, in a way. that's what I'm thinking. So, yeah. but there's two my that, other little wild card is Alberto Marias. Okay. Don't know why the man behind Aqua Di Gio, Versace Pour Homme, which Jeremy used to like, and I just think. That's and my he's now got his heart. own little niche house. So, okay. But then, you know, a lot of these perfumers, they might have their own houses, they still go off and do work for other houses. So, so what's your best guess, people, in the comments? We think we're very, ex uh, we were interested to see what the fragrance would be like. And he said something oh, about when it's going to come right. out. Right, so the release is, uh, the, uh, so Jeremy says, we have an internal deadline, the perfumer and me, we will stand in the rose field in grass in May 2019 when the May roses are getting picked and the final fragrance will be on our hands. At that time, we press the production button and we are ready for pre-orders, May 2019. My brand will be sold exclusively online at first because it's a social media brand. There will be no samples. People will have to blind buy it in full bottles. Mm -hmm. When the brand expands, we can go to the stores. So I, I'm wondering whether the fact that he's releasing it in a field of roses in grass, mm. does that mean the main note is going to be rose? Like why would you do that? He thinks you doth read too much into that. I do not. I think that it will be. But grass do, do they not do other notes as well? Yeah, but he's releasing a field of roses oh, okay. in grass. So... Interesting, yes, also, okay. So Chanel own a lot of that land. Mm -hmm. So maybe it is Olivia Polge. Could it be? <laughs> Discuss in comments yes, below. Yes, let, let us know what Anything's you think. Anything's possible really, isn't it? And he's not giving much away, mm. so uh, interesting. The other thing then, of course, <laughs> Oh, we're really upset to see that there's been a controversy online. Yes, brilliant. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's been this YouTube thing. I don't know if anyone saw it. Well, I'm sure many of you did. So the thing that drew, drew my attention to it was a Jeremy video in my feed that says, I excuse myself to the fragrance runner or something like that. Um, my excuse or something like that to the fragrance runner. And so basically, Jeremy won the award for the best fragrance vlog, i.e. YouTube video, basically, mm -hmm. uh, at the Fragrance Foundation Award 2018 for his video, which was something like top five reasons to wear a fragrance or mm -hmm. why you should wear a fragrance, something like that. Um, and he won the award, and uh, the, which many of you may have seen. Also, Carlos and Stephen from Red Lessons were up for it, okay, and, Steve, yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, Sebastian from the, the you know, looking for smelling smelling fragrance. Great, Off well, it was up for it. Smell yeah, smell amazing. I do. Yes. Ah, you really smell amazing. It's not off topic, of course, but just catching whiffs of it. So we'll we'll come back to that. We'll come back to why in a minute. Mm. Um, so J Jeremy won. Maybe predictably because you know he has the, his video had a lot more views, just more clout. What's the criteria though? Is it if it's about views, then well, he's going to win it, isn't he? Yeah, it's going to help him, isn't it? Because you know he's he's that that's a, a real measure of success. So um, his video was about why you should wear fragrances, some good reasons to wear a fragrance. That's the kind sort of, a bit of thing of, I Google all the time. <laughs> for us in the fragrance community, it was a bit strange, and yeah, it was like well. Well, you know, the least it's kind of a no-brainer why you should yeah, smell nice. It helps you to give a better image of yourself. But he gave some specific reasons. And um, what happened was this guy, the fragrance runner, who had a, a, had a very small channel with about 600 subscribers until about two <laughs> days ago, uh, had apparently done a video before Jeremy saying almost all the same things. And he reckons that Jeremy nicked his idea and copied most of what he said. And he made a very long video, which I'll, if it's still up, I'll post the link in the description. 
don't know if you should subscribe to him because he's used this to get a load of subscribers. But he made an original video that Jeremy did seem to have copied the clips the that we saw. Um, we obviously didn't see everything, but yeah. the clips that he showed us were quite close. So what what he said in one clip and what Jeremy said in another clip pretty close but there is only a few examples so yeah. i'm not willing to say 100 no. percent he copied the entire video but the clips that we saw were were too close to be it did seem he, really. he probably did borrow some ideas from this yeah. smaller channel and indeed jeremy released a video which seems now to have been deleted which said basically an apology sorry for stealing your idea uh, but not not a very groveling one, but just, you know, I'm sorry for taking inspiration from you. I, and, and I don't know what, I don't think there's anything to say you can't do that. We all no, copy each other. Mm. You know, we all do top fives and we, we take influence from others. Yeah, so I don't it's know not what like the, individual videos are copyrighted. Don't so, so I don't know if there's any rules in place or if he's broken any rules or any guidelines. I doubt it. But yeah. obviously it would affect his reputation and maybe his award, the validity of mm. that award now. So I can see. I was why surprised it's, mm. that he, Jeremy Fragrance, actually bothered to respond to this video. Mm. So there must have been something going on that it was actually an issue for mm. Jeremy. Anyway, you know, we don't want to get, you know, we don't know the ins and outs or rights or wrongs, but it was kind of interesting and very surprising that Jeremy made a direct response to such a mm. small channel. So there must have been some kind of issue that he was worried about this. Um, and the fragrance runner bloke, um, the video was a, it started off and you could see his point, mm. but then he went on a bit too long and it, it got a bit mental, didn't it? I think... He was almost I foaming can, at the mouth. Yeah, I can understand no offense, why he's upset that, that someone very, very successful mm. has, has appeared to mm. have stolen his ideas and won an award mm. with that, but he went in personally at Jeremy and I yeah. didn't like that. I found that quite uncomfortable. It got a bit nasty. You can have yeah. your own opinions yeah. of anyone. You don't need to slag them off on a video per about personal stuff. No. You could say, look, you copied my ideas as far as I'm concerned and I'm not happy about that. You yes. didn't credit me. But you don't need to start going in. I mean, everyone's got their opinions. Then it got very unpleasant. Mm. And um, I thought that was a bit out of order. And in, I just do want to say that, you know, because I've made, I did make one video where I made a joke about Jeremy Fragrance because he did the Patreon thing and then he bought a Ferrari and people were upset that he'd asked for money for Patreon. Then he turned up having a Ferrari and oh you should have used all the money to pump it back into your channel. I did make one video in the intro where I made mm. a little joke about that. But in all honesty, that I'm not... That was a good humoured joke. It wasn't... Uh, you yeah. didn't slag him off. I wasn't really trying to put the knife in on Jeremy. Not that I have any influence to do that. But I think Jeremy Fragrance overall is a really good um, thing for the fragrance community because he's much bigger than any other of you. He gives the online YouTube fragrance community more clout. So, you know, loads of other... Any other fragrance reviewer who's got a sponsorship or, um, you know, has their channel has had a bit of success... It's kind of filtered down a little bit because maybe Jeremy Fragrance has made YouTube fragrance reviews a thing and his channel is very, very populist. But when I first stumbled across YouTube fragrance reviews, he was the first person I ever yeah. saw. And I think he's, you know, he, his presentation is really slick and really good. You know, the high quality video, the sound, that's always really good. He's very polished, he's very charismatic, and he's, he's a good thing for all of us, of course. I, you know, might enjoy watching a small channel doing a vintage fragrance review more than a Jeremy mm. fragrance review. But I've got, a, I've I've got nothing a bad to say about him. Different opinion. What do you think? I don't think he's bad for the fragrance community. I'm not sure that he is. He's doing that much for anybody. Um, it's not something that I I enjoy the art of fragrances, and I like to know how they smell and that kind of stuff whereas I don't, I don't care obviously as a woman I don't care what women's opinions are on fragrances I think what Jeremy does is he reaches out to the non frag heads and he probably gives them some useful information if that's all they're looking for is impressing other people it's a completely different world to what I'm in the fragrance community for so mm. I'm a little bit different in your opinion on that yeah I'm not slagging him off it's just it doesn't cater to, to my needs at all no okay and I think I speak for a lot of people that are more interested in the artistry of fragrances. Yeah, his channel wouldn't tend to appeal 
the the more heavily you are into the the, mm. the um, nuances of smell and uh, obscure niche brands or the art of fragrance the less this channel will appeal yeah. to you and, and as it's time's gone forward it's um, got more like that it's more of a kind of a grooming and yeah. an appearance and yeah. people maybe young people that don't quite know how they want to dress or present themselves yeah. or what fragrance they should wear to the office people that aren't necessarily into fragrances no. but they just want to pick the right one to make the right impression it could you know it could be useful for them but exactly they want yeah. a quick answer in an entertaining format what's and a, a good one girl. and a pretty girl yeah, it doesn't hurt either so he's but got a winning just format come here <laughs> well exactly <laughs> we're giving you that too here um, um, sometimes you even see my my cat your cat <laughs> can be on screen so yeah. he doesn't have a, a, an exotic short hair cat with a kidney uh, <laughs> failure issue on his channel but uh, other than that he does have some great stuff on the channel uh, which I can see why it's appealing so interesting this whole controversy we just wanted to get involved in the mm -hmm. gossip I do think yeah I, um, the fragrance runner okay I can see his point about the, the Jeremy Nix's idea but I think it's a bit naughty that he's deliberately he's actually cynically I think deliberately done this to get a load more subscribers and views and this video has got tons more videos than any of his and other he's stuff increased his subscriber yeah. base by three or four fold so far yeah just by having a rant and I think that was probably the intention yeah so I mean, he yeah. had a right to say something but i don't think he needed to go in personally on jeremy yeah. that's what and it will think. be interesting to see if he now continues to churn out excellent high quality fragrance reviews with insightful analysis of the fragrances <laughs> if he does fair enough but uh, maybe uh, let's see if he does let's so see what happens. yes it was a little bit of a cynical maneuver by him i think yeah, yeah. Uh, i think so, most of those frag those those videos generally are mm. They're kind of a bit like, oh, there's Fragcom drama. Yeah. I'm going to say something, whether you want to go in and accuse someone of buying subscribers. Yeah, or, oh, yeah that kind know, of thing's bad. Yeah, all yeah. that stuff. It, in a way, you're, all you're doing is shining the light on yourself and trying to get views and subscribers. Mm. It's kind of what we're doing right now, actually, isn't it? Well, that's the thing. As soon as you comment on it, you're now getting involved. Throwing yourself in there. So. But our channel is... We, we know, are. We're not saying. Oh, we don't like to see all this gossip. We are actually admitting. Yeah, no, we're loving it. Sometimes we're, it's. We've got the popcorn. <laughs> we're popcorn is out. The beers are out. Yeah, <laughs> beers are out. And we're like, we do enjoy a bit of frag. Well, at least we're saying. We're not saying. Oh, we don't like any fragcom drama. No, we do enjoy. Yeah. Sometimes we enjoy it. Let's be honest. Keep it's the fun. drama coming, guys. That's what YouTube's about. Everyone's a winner in this. Jeremy Fragrance. All publicity is good publicity. People are talking about. Oh, hang on. About you him. just plagiarised me because I said oh, that earlier. Well, go on. You say it then. <laughs> All publicity is good publicity. He's getting Actually, more talk. probably said that before, haven't they? Yes. No, it wasn't invented by you. But he's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's still, everyone's talking about Jeremy. No problem for him. He'll go on. Fragrance Run has got more views from it. And now we're, getting, we're weighing in too. So <laughs> it's not hurting anyone, really. So um, that's it. Apart from some, why am I oh, some smelling so good? And what's coming up in the next video? So I'm wearing Paris Biarritz from Chanel. From their Lezu collection. I'll be doing a review of that this Fantastic, week. Fantastic, isn't it? Citrusy fragrance. Oh, Let's I love just leave it at that. Yeah. Okay. And we've also got Derville as well. Yeah, so we'll be talking about those next week. Um, that's my scent of the night, tobacco rose, a beautiful, rosy, beeswax, savoury, oriental really concoction. Luca Turin wrote one. What's the company? Sentence. It's Papillon Perfumery. Look at Turin in his book, The Guy. We've got it. Wrote, Not the ebook, the paperback. We've got the real life paper job. Each. Even smells of new books. And um, that perfume in particular, Tobacco Rose got one sentence. Was it transparent oriental rose? Nice, or yes. It didn't seem. It did yeah. not do it justice. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah. So. But we're going to give our views on uh, the new Luca Turin book, the Lou Chanel's. We, we got two, didn't get Venezia, but we got the two we liked most. And we'll also be doing Troll Idol next week. Yeah, we'll get back into so trolling. if you've got any um, applications, get them in. Get them we'll in. be looking at our previous video and this one too for our um, potential winners. Exactly. Drink of the night for me, Tiscate Polish Lager from the local corner shop. Fantastic stuff. And uh, Claire, of course, the obligatory Diet Coke in a San Miguel glass. And some vodka. Oh, oh yeah, of course. <laughs> okay, thanks for joining us. So, 
Thanks for watching. Let us know your thoughts about everything we discussed and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye bye.